In this video, I just want to follow up on RabbitMQ and the implementation of uh, a message broker, just to and even see a little bit of Docker and, uh, and a FTP microservice. See how that goes. <coughs> okay, so uh, what I've got over here is a virtual box um, a VM running Ubuntu, and I've got actually uh, RabbitMQ and an FTP server running as a Docker image. And if you recall, Docker is a uh, a kind of virtualization that shares the Linux headers, so it doesn't actually have a full, complete isolation of a, of a virtual machine, but it does have uh, enough isolation to isolate your app, and it's very lightweight, so it's, that's the hottest thing right now. Let's take a look at what we've got running, I've prepared earlier. And what I've actually got is RabbitMQ running as some Rabbit 2 and an FTP server running as FTPD server. That's the names I gave it. And I've also given some port mappings. So the application inside would run uh, on port 5672, which I've mapped to the host machine as 5672, um, and 8080 to 15672. Okay, cool. So let's go to the RabbitMQ um, URL, which you can kind of see here. And if you go to the admin page, you can actually make a bunch of different uh, admin logins and what kind of access they have to. Um, and in this case, I made an FTP microservice login uh, just for a demonstration and a little bit later. Um, if you go to the overview section, you can kind of see the traffic that's, that's going on here. Um, interestingly enough, you can actually also cluster uh, RabbitMQ so that you have some fallback. Uh, and during that cluster, it'll balance things out. And if one of them falls over, then the other one will pick up right up where it is, where it left off, which is kind of nice. If you go to connections, you can see what computers are connected and where. Um, channels are just channels. Exchanges are like endpoints of where your applications can connect to. And I've actually made an endpoint here called FTP.direct. And direct is a topology in RabbitMQ that lets you. Um, uh, send messages uh, straight to an another application. So uh, uh, an application would connect to FTP Direct and receive messages directly from it. Um, additionally, you can also you can also have fanout. Um, fanout sends uh, the message uh, that you put on the queues um, straight out to everybody that's connected. Um, headers is just sending headers and topics. You can have uh, kind of filters. So if you you can have like a logs topic, a feeds topic, an FTP topic. And they kind of all connect to the same exchange, but they only listen to they only listen to messages on their topics. Okay, so uh, I bound this um, this FTP .direct exchange to a queue to one specific queue uh, called FTP feeds. You can see all the queues over here. Um, I've also made the messages durable. That's what this little D means, and durable means the messages will persist uh, on here until they get uh, acknowledged that they've been consumed. Let's go to ftp.feeds and kind of see the load here and what how many messages per second and the IO and things like that. All nice and fancy. Reporting is good. Uh, you go to so let's make sure let's see what we've got in the queue. So the queue right now is empty. Cool. That's what we expect. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can kind of use the user interface to see what kind of messages you've got on the queue. And this uh, requeue uh, option here means if uh, if if I had an application listening on the queue, I don't want it to suddenly take off messages from the queue and then have it disappear into the ether. I kind of want to put that back in. I just want to take a peek at it. I can do that, or I can take them off the queue just by saying no. It's no big deal. Um, okay, so let's publish a message and take a look at what that looks like. I've got a message here already prepared. I just decided to make it a JSON string. I can make it persistent. So what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to put this message on the queue. Okay. Now I'm going to pull the message out of the queue. And we can see the message here. It should be identical to the one on the top. Yep, yep, looks right. Uh, if I say no, it's going to consume the message. I get the same message. But then if I try to get another message, the queue is empty. Cool. So now there's nothing on the queue. I'm going to hop over to my application that I prepared beforehand. Let's clear everything out here, sorry. Uh, it's going to comment everything out here. So this application is going to pull messages from the queue. And what's going to happen is it's, uh, it's going to print out just the ID. Uh, so let's connect the 
run the application, compiles, runs, and it says, should say, okay, so FTP microservice uh, initialized, it's just waiting for to receive messages. Let's throw a message on there. Let's make this 101. And click publish. And you can see right here, it just printed out the uh, the sender ID, which happens to be batch ID in, in this application, uh, in in this case. Okay, cool. And I just sent a bunch of them, and you can see them all pop up here. I'm just pulling off the queue. I'll stop that for a second, and I'm going to stop this application, clear it out, make sure my queue is clear. And you say, okay, so what about some some fallback? What happens if if the application dies? Okay, so let's do that. Let's put some uh, some some jobs onto the queue. So let's publish uh, 101 to 104. So let's, we've got 101, 102, 103, and 104 in the queue. Okay, so the application is dead, right? It's it's turned off. So if I if I run the application now, restart it, whatever. Uh, terminology you want to use, it picks up where it left off. So these messages that were on the queue, you notice that actually they were out of order. The nice thing about this, the way it's been coded is that um, each each time it pulls something off the queue, it handles it asynchronously. It just works it off on the background and it stops itself when it's done. This basic acknowledgement here means that there's a there's a timeout on on the, the queue that we can specify. So say we say in an hour, an FTP job can at, ma at most last one hour. The application goes and picks up a message or a job from the queue, and it, it does its FTP thing, and then at the end of the FTP thing, it's going to acknowledge that, okay, it's been consumed, it's perfect, it's it, it, it hasn't errored out. Okay, then that job will completely disappear off the, the queue now. However, if, say, after an hour, after a bunch of retries, it never receives the basic acknowledgement, uh, uh, the application can even even say, "Hey, requeue this message. I don't know how to handle it." Uh, some other application can pick up where it's left off, or you can we can make a change to the code base and, and pick up that job. <coughs> and if I keep adding items to the queue, it'll just keep keep going on. And say, "Let's let's close this off again. Let's stop it." Okay, it crashed. I'm going to simulate that by stopping it. I'm going to chuck some more stuff on the queue. 106, and I restart my application. It should pick up that message, so we don't lose jobs once they've made it to the queue. Okay, cool. So let's uh, now. What happens if the queue dies uh, instead of the application? So that right now the application is still running. It's connected to MQ right now. Let's kill the service. So let's go to here and stop the service. Uh, I'm going to do that with Docker. So I've stopped the service. How do I know? Let's go to the, let's let's double check. Can we get to the management service? Uh, I can't. Okay, cool. It's down. That service is down. FTP is still running, but this is down. Um, and the application can't resume because the the MQ is down. Okay. So our IT guy is very quick to notice this that it's gone down, and he restarts the service. Start the service. Service is back up. So I've got two items again, and let's go back into the management portal. If you notice, the application has still been running. So let's 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 put on another job onto the queue now that the queue is back up. Let's put another item onto the queue. Okay, let's call it one three three seven for the ID. And the application automatically reconnected to the service um, and picked up the next job. Now we can actually have some better logging and output th for for warning and letting us know, but uh, it's it's there and it, it has a back off policy as well. So if it it doesn't continually try to uh, connect immediately straight off the bat, it, it has a little bit of a, a back off policy. So there's a little breather in there. Okay, cool. So that that just prints uh, the batch ID right now, and uh, or the sender ID. Yeah, that's what the the mapping is. Let's do actually some FTPing. So let's going to stop this application for a second and redo this. 
the nice thing about this JSON string is I've, I've got this as a JSON string initially just because it's easier to read and when we first start out and if we actually need to force it to FTP something we can actually just go to the to the web portal and just chuck in uh, a request or just pull them off and just see what's kind of what's going on <coughs> so I'm going to modify this application and put this code back in it's going to spawn an FTP instance and send an FTP uh, and I'm only going to acknowledge when the transfer is complete. Okay, save and let's let's run that sucker. Make sure there's nothing on the queue first. Cool. And I'm going to run that application. So if you recall, I actually have an FTP service on here. And let's connect, let's spin off an interactive shell inside that image. So this is the, inside the image, now the FTPD server image, this is not the, the, the Ubuntu host machine, though the host image is an Ubuntu instance. And let's go to the, uh, the FTP folder. I've made a, oop, there we go, FTP users. We've got no files in this directory right now. Cool. Um, I prepared a file earlier. Ztemp small file dot xml. Let's do that. Small file. Oops. Erg. Okay. Small file dot xml. I'm going to call it small one dot txt. <coughs> and what this will actually do is the application will send these files off the queue all at the same time. So if I just push publish, so I'm gonna push them really quickly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. So you notice them picking up the uh, jobs over here. Ideally, these messages would be generated from an application of uh, some sort, not by hand, of course. So if we notice here, small ones already been transferred. Let's take a look. Okay, so a couple of them have transferred. Let's uh, let's check the uh, the FTP endpoint. Okay, so all of the files have transferred, and that's the uh, the FTP microservice and the a uh, little bit of the RabbitMQ and and Docker. Thanks for listening.